I have a question for you. What is the meaning of life? We don't really know what life's all about. We just live it and hope we're doing it right. But we don't understand how quickly our life can be kicked from underneath us. We don't appreciate the value of our life until it's too late. This is a story of someone whose life was taken too soon. My own. Who better than to speak at the eulogy of a person than the person themselves? And I'm sure that most of you, my family, friends, classmates, enemies, what have you, would have done a fabulous job. But I think this is something you should hear from the source. You and I are gathered here today to celebrate my wonderful ride on this roller coaster that we call life. I had a very simple life. I was hardworking, loved my family and friends, and I developed an appreciation in my adult years that makes me so proud of myself. I will be completely honest with you. I've always been an overachiever, thus resulting in full schedules, multitasking, and countless hours of working on something. At a young age, I learned what the term hardworking meant. My life as a child has consisted of nothing but school work and miscellaneous work done around the house, whether it was just household chores or remodeling our house. I was always up to something. Being the oldest of three and the firstborn to two 19-year-olds who weren't fortunate enough to graduate high school, my schooling was taken very seriously. In elementary and middle school, I was pushed to be advanced in all of my subjects. In kindergarten, I was reading full books on my own. In fourth grade, I was in advanced reading where I read with middle schoolers. And in seventh grade, I was studying 10th grade math. In high school, I was no longer being pushed by my parents, but pushed by myself. And I started taking full course loads, and they were packed with AP and advanced classes. I took six math classes within a four-year span, two of them being advanced placement. I took every CAD class in my high school, one of them being advanced. I took two psychology courses, one of them being advanced placement as well. Um, alongside of high school, I had a goal to get a job. That was my goal. And at 16, I landed the job. It's not that I needed money. Um, I wanted money for teenage expenses, of course. But I landed my first job at McDonald's in my junior year summer, the summer before my junior year. And I am so proud to say that it was my first job. And I know that sounds weird, but it taught me experience and it taught me what a job was like and it was preparing me for my future. I worked 40 hours during the summer. I worked the maximum legal amount of hours during the school year. I worked there for two and a half years and I was promoted prior to before I left. And on top of school and working one job, I thought I would push myself and try to get a second one. And although that was short-lived, it was worth a shot. Besides school and work, I worked all around my house. Not only did I do usual chores, but I was always working on something to make the house or my bedroom or whatever come alive in some sort of way. My mother and I painted and stained and remodeled every room or piece of furniture that we could. I found DIY projects to express who I was and they usually turned out pretty well. Ever since I can remember, I was a hard worker. I was always up to something, whether it was homework or making a piece of decor for my bedroom. I would always be found working on something. I learned how to appreciate hard work that way, and it was at a very young age, mind you. And nowadays, that seems to be something that a lot of people don't have. Apart from always working on something and being busy, I always found time for the ones that I loved. I was always taught the importance of loving your family and friends. Ever since I was a child, I was a lover. I found love in everything and everyone, whether you were a stranger or not. If you were my family or friend, you received so much love from me that you were tickle pink. My family was a very close-knit Italian family. We did everything together. We were best friends, and we all have hearts of gold. We really do. My tradition that um, I have with my family that is my favorite is our Christmas dinner. We made a family recipe soup by hand. We would come together, make the meat mixture, make the noodle dough, we would roll it out, cut it out, fold all of the noodles. We would sit down in one sitting and make a thousand or more. My family has also made several other traditions from holidays and birthdays to Black Friday shopping and cleaning days. We're really big on traditions and I lived my entire life by those. As a friend, I was always there for you whether I knew you or not. Whether we were best friends or we just knew of each other. If you needed something 
or a helping hand, I would be there for you. I would always show my appreciation by doing little things just so I could see the, that person happy. One day I saw a girl that I knew of having a rough time in her life, so I stepped up and I talked to her about what was going on, and we discussed it, and I helped her out a bit. And she thanked me several times, and she offered several things to repay me, and I, it just felt good to help her out. I don't look for anything in return, and I really believe that if you do good, good will do you sevenfold. As a girlfriend, I would always shower my boyfriend Christian with love and surprises, whether it was physical gifts or little things like putting away his laundry. Little acts of appreciation for, for the people you love can go a long way. I uh, was always his shoulder to cry on and to help him through tough times in his life. I always supported him even with things I didn't agree on that he wanted to do with his life. And I would always be accepting of it and I would push him and help him do them. Although I never expected anything from anyone, I was not handed a fair hand in a relationship. I was always there for everyone, especially my family and friends. Even if I didn't know you or even if you did me wrong, I would still be there for you because I knew what it was like to be standing and screaming in a crowded room and not have anyone even bother to look up. Some would argue that my selflessness is a reflection of my hippie side, and trust me, I get called a hippie a lot. Um, however, I would refer to it as just me being peaceful, and that's just one aspect of my personality. Another aspect of my personality was my appreciative for life itself. Um, I was very appreciative for life. I didn't develop this personality trait until I was a junior in high school. After I was dumped by my long-term boyfriend, I came out of my reserve shell and started taking control of my young life. I developed myself in forms of social interaction as a leader and through self-expression. I joined in on clubs to help others and help me become a leader. As a junior and senior in high school, I took up a club called Link Crew, and Link Crew helps incoming freshmen learn the ins and outs of high school, what to do, what not to do, where the classes are. They take a tour of the high school, and I really loved it. I was in charge of all my group activities, and I really learned an appreciation for helping others out. Um, Link Crew actually pushed me to join another club called Octagon Club, where you volunteer for miscellaneous things through the community, throughout the community um, through the school year. After a tornado hit my hometown, I volunteered to clean up the debris for the following couple weeks after. I also volunteered to walk in and help out with a suicide prevention and awareness walk held in the downtown area. I began figuring out who I was um, and I found a love for self-expression through uh, fashion, music, and tattoos. Fashion was always a part of my life. When I got older, I could afford more clothing, and I found a way to express myself through outfits. I was runner-up in being best dressed in high school. My style was commented on daily. Um, one of my coworkers, Vivian, comments, commented once, um, I would miss your style if you ever left. You always wear the cutest things. Um, all my life, even before I was born, I had a talent in music. In the womb, I would tap to the beat of anything that was playing, but I specifically liked Cinderella and Metallica. In my younger years, I struggled finding my niche in life, but I knew that I loved music, so I started um, taking up band, and I took up percussion. Um, as an adult, I expanded my love of music, and I took um, the liberty of teaching myself piano and guitar. However, my favorite instrument is my voice. I love to sing, and my boyfriend Chris would always tell me, you have the most beautiful voice, sing to me. Once I became of age, however, I found another way of expression, and that was through tattoos. Little did I know that I would fall in love with them and want several of them. I love how you can tell stories with art on your skin, and the beauty and difference in meanings to everyone always made me really appreciate them. My first one was a cross symbolizing my relationship with the Lord. The second was my um, was a compass, and that was to symbolize figuring out who I was and where I was going. And the third was a birdcage with roses symbolizing my freedom and beauty of life. As I grew up, I realized that it's okay to live life and appreciate and take opportunities. Embracing your life is necessary to actually live and not just 
exist. I found a way of appreciating others and myself through helping and leading people and expressing myself. Although my life was packed tight from the beginning, I got to live my life while I could, and I couldn't be more thankful. My life was tailored to teach me the importance of hard work and to value myself and the people around me. I never understood what it meant to live. Most of us don't know what it means to live, and we never really know what it means until we become selfless, kind, and value the lives of each other. That is when we will appreciate life, and that is when we will be happy and at peace with ourselves. So what I want from you is to leave here with a smile and appreciate what you have. It might not be enough for you, but for someone else, it's quite enough, and that you should be thankful for. Live on in my name and promise me that you will lead others to happiness and remember that life is beautiful and it needs to be lived like you want it to be lived.